The more astute viewers among you may already know that I'm actually primarily a drummer, with drums to this day being the instrument that I am the least terrible at. The even more astute among you may already know that I was actually 13 years old at one point in my drumming history. By this combination of facts, you can safely assume that I have a deeply ingrained love for odd time signatures. There's something just inherently kick-ass about a song that breaks out of boring old 4-4 time or its stuck-up cousin 3-4 time and journeys out to the edge of what's rhythmically intelligible. As any preteen drummer will tell you, nothing is more satisfying than finding a piece of music that seems completely inscrutable at first, and then, after repeated listenings and constantly doing arithmetic while the song is playing, managing to make sense of the rhythms and successfully follow along with what the musicians are doing. So, let's take a look at a few of the different ways that video games use these weird time signatures to great effect. I found that for a lot of cases where strange time signatures are being used, they're the focal point of the entire tune. For example, the composition of Kingdom Hearts' Hollow Bastion music seems to have been driven entirely by a rhythm unofficially called the 5-4 clave. The 5-4 clave, as you may have already guessed, requires a 5-4 time signature and sounds like this. This rhythm effectively breaks the bar up from 5 beats into two smaller chunks of 3 and 2 beats, creating this wonderfully lopsided feeling. Uses of this in pop culture range from the crooked waltz feeling of Dave Brubeck's Take 5, to the pulse-pounding action vibe of the Mission Impossible theme. Simple game. Is he serious? Hollow Bastion uses this repeating rhythmic pattern in almost every level of its composition. It's outlined explicitly in the bass and this inner plucked string part, while the melody blasts us with this relentless eighth note line that subtly accents the same 5-4 clave rhythm. The tune mostly sits on the tonic B minor chord like this, but when the chords do change later on, we see the harmonic rhythm conforming to this pattern, splitting the bar into alternating three and two beat chunks. This continuous driving rhythm, as well as the constant stream of eighth notes, use of dissonant half-step motion in the inner voices, and thick orchestral texture create this oppressive, gloomy mood that never lets us catch our breath. Much like how the twisting pipes and pathways and unending waves of enemies keep the player on their toes as they try to push their way through Hollow Bastion in the game. Taking a look at the tune Leave Taking from Nino Kuni 2, we see a completely different approach to the 5-4 time signature. Where Hollow Bastion based a lot of its compositional choices around this 5-4 clave rhythm, Leave Taking uses the 5-4 time signature entirely in service of its melody. The extra beat in each bar gives the sense that the music is pausing to catch its breath each time it starts this somber melodic figure, giving the phrase a gravitas that it wouldn't otherwise have. C-sharps! The way it just sits on those C-sharps for two full beats before resolving down to the B absolutely wrecks me, and you wouldn't be able to fit that into a 4-4 time signature without wrecking the rhythm of the rest of the melody. This emphasis on melody first is a characteristic of Joe Hisaishi's writing, and though it's masterfully done here, I'd say that Hollow Bastion's time signature first approach is much more common in video game music. For another example of this approach, we need look no further than Fire Emblem's Black Fang theme. 
Meant to symbolize a group of assassins known as the Black Fang, this ominous tune uses a 7-4 time signature. Once again we see the bar broken up into alternating segments, this time of 4 and 3 beats, emphasized by the bass, the constant driving 8th note line in the middle voice, and the placement of the chord. The plotting bassline and use of the dark flat 2 chord in a minor key evokes a pretty grim atmosphere. When fighting one of the four fangs, the four strongest members of this group of assassins, the music transforms this black fang theme by doubling the tempo and laying down a shredding bassline underneath. These multi-layered, rhythmically dense parts, outlining the same dark harmony as before, creates a really tense, hectic atmosphere, and using a 7-8 time signature makes it just that much harder for the listener to find their bearings. In this kind of tune, the goal is to disorient the player with a barrage of fast and complicated rhythms and harmonies in order to create the kind of heart-pumping tension that you want the player to feel as they tackle a tough boss fight, and the time signature serves wonderfully in that regard. Another way that more complicated time signatures are used are in what I call drum-driven arrangements. Basically, some tunes take an eccentric time signature and base their entire composition around creating a groove to fit into this time signature, with melodic and harmonic elements used only to dress up the rhythmic interest generated by the percussion parts. A great example of this is the Weapons Factory music from Super Mario RPG, which layers three snare tracks, two bass drum tracks, and this industrial clang noise into a groove in 13-8 time, while these simple repeating synth parts help outline where these measures start and end. This tune follows a common technique among the more wild time signatures where a pattern will be established and then every other repetition of this pattern will either chop off a beat or add an extra beat. This is an easy way to make a time signature sound way more complex than it actually is. See how you can read this as a repeating figure in 7-8 with the last note cut off in every other bar? That's a life hack for you aspiring prog rock composers out there. Anyways, the layered percussion here does a great job of evoking the kind of erratic industrial noise you'd expect from this level's spooky factory aesthetic. Some tunes manage to use a really peculiar time signature without resorting to the chop off a beat every other bar method. When fighting the Barrier Trio in Mother 3, the Japanese only sequel to Earthbound, the battle music that plays makes use of a 15-8 time signature. The battle system in this game challenges players to tap a button in rhythm with the background music in order to score combos, so as the boss fights increase in difficulty, the rhythms of the boss music also get increasingly more complicated. In this example, the drums play an erratic pattern that refuses to break the measure up into smaller, more digestible chunks, the way we saw in some of our previous examples. It's just 15 straight beats of madness on a loop throughout the entire tune. That is pretty ridiculous, but the confusing nature of this meter is offset by the constant repetition of the drum part. It's hard to figure out at first, but the longer you listen to this loop, the more and more your ear picks up, until eventually you can follow along and even predict what's coming next. Considering the mechanics of this game's battle system, this is perfect. Now, earlier I mentioned the disorienting boss theme trope in reference to Fire Emblem's Softly with Grace theme. I'm sure you already know of one example that makes that tune's 7-8 time signature look like 1-1. One, one. I'm talking of course about the infamous Ganondorf battle theme from Ocarina of Time. This tune's really got it all. A constant barrage of 16th notes, chromatically shifting harmony, a melody that deliberately clashes with the harmony, and, to top it all off, a time signature of 2316. When you break it down here, what we see outlined by the xylophone, timpani, and snare drum is a pattern of three groups of three 16th notes, followed by a group of four 16th notes. This makes one bar of 1316, which is already pretty out there. 
We then see our metrical life hack from earlier used here with every other bar knocking out one of these groups of 316 to make a bar of 1016 or 58. Alternating consistently between these two rhythmic groupings adds up to a bar of 2316 and it sounds like this. It's pretty wild, and without having the music in front of you, it's really hard to follow, which makes it perfect for this boss fight. The rhythm's frantic energy and the disorienting harmony leaves us barely hanging on as listeners, putting us in that adrenaline-fueled fight-or-flight state that goes along with challenging the evil demon king of the world to a winner-take-all tennis match. Like our example from Mother 3, though, there's no variation in this rhythmic pattern. Granted, if there were any variation throughout, I'm sure this piece would stop making any sense whatsoever, but this means that it is possible to figure out the rhythm and follow along once you get used to the pattern. This is not the case in one of my favorite examples of time signature tomfoolery in video game music, Kirby Superstar's Marx's Theme. Instead of one insane time signature to keep us off balance, composer Jun Ishikawa constantly changes the time signature to ensure that we can never expect exactly what's coming next. There's a constant pulse provided by the snare drum and bass part, but the length of each phrase seems to change almost at random. I notated the time signatures depending entirely on when the chords changed, which gives us a healthy mix of 7, 5, and 3-4 time signatures throughout. You'll notice that the rest of the musical elements here aren't quite as dark as some of our previous examples. The harmony is definitely dissonant, with minor major 7th chords, chromatic medium leaps, and constantly shifting tonalities littering the tune throughout. But we also get the occasional major 7th chord or functional harmonic move that keeps things from getting too dark, and we do get a strong melody that always fits with the harmony underneath. I'd say that these decisions were made to better fit the tone of a Kirby game. The cumulative effect of all these elements isn't so much that of an adrenaline pumping battle as it is like a carnival ride that's gone completely off the rails, and I think that this was a really smart move. It fits really well with Marx's jester turned demon bat thing aesthetic. Unlike the previous examples, there's no consistent pattern here that reveals itself after repeated listenings and careful counting. To be able to tell exactly what's coming next at any point in this tune would require you to memorize the entire piece from top to bottom, which honestly makes my little 13-year-old drummer heart just swell with joy. As you can see, there are lots of different effects that composers achieve by using these odd time signatures, and the odder the better as far as I'm concerned. Speaking of odd, big thanks to patron Stephen DiRico for requesting this topic. Ah, I'm just kidding, you're the best Stephen, and I'm sure you're very normal. If you liked the video, consider checking out my Patreon page here to help me make more. I'm also on Twitter at 8BitMusicTheory. Thanks so much for watching the video, and I'll see you all next time. One, two, three, 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 one, two,